Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation with radicals. We have 2 plus square root of 3 to the power x plus 2 minus root 3 to the power x equals 4 to the power x. And we're going to be solving for x values. Now, this is kind of like a non-standard equation because the bases are different, the exponents are the same, and there's no easy way to simplify this. For example, a lot of times when you get equations like this, people think about using the log on both sides, but logging both sides is not going to help because we don't really have an expression for the log of a sum. We do have the product rule, we do have the quotient rule, but the log of a sum cannot actually be simplified. So, we're going to have to think differently here, so it's kind of like outside the box thinking. One of the things that I want you to notice here is that the left-hand side and the right-hand side, looking at it from a calculus perspective, are both increasing functions. When we look at the graph, it'll make more sense, but if you kind of look at the bases, the bases are both greater than 1, 2 minus root 3, right? Actually, 2 minus root 3 is not greater than 1, but if you think about 2 plus root 3, uh, that is greater than 1. So, so what happens is we have an increasing function on the left-hand side and an increasing function on the right-hand side. So that doesn't necessarily mean they intersect at a single point. So anyways, to be able to solve this problem, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide both sides by 4 to the power x. So it's going to go like this. 2 plus root 3 to the power x divided by 4 to the power x. And then 2 minus root 3 to the power x divided by 4 to the power x equals 1. Awesome. And then we're going to go ahead and use a common exponent and write this as 2 plus root 3 over 4 to the power x. And then 2 minus root 3 over 4 to the power x equals 1. Great. Now, we do have two expressions on the left-hand side. The bases are now a little different. Remember what I said about the comparison of the bases. I said that 2 plus root 3, or did I say that? is less than 4 because root 3 is less than 2 and obviously 2 minus root 3 is less than 4. What is that supposed to mean though, right? Well, it just means that if we divide both sides by 4 here, it means our bases are both less than 1. So that's important because now we did get a decreasing function. That is the secret about it. If you have two increasing functions or two decreasing functions on uh, different sides, then you can do this trick and get a better picture. Okay, what's that supposed to mean? It means there's going to be a single solution. The solution is unique because this is decreasing and this is a horizontal line. Therefore, there should be a single intersection point. But how do you find that? Okay, so guessing at this point is not that easy. It's not as easy or straightforward as this one. Let's take a look at some previous examples that we've done before. Like if you had 3 to the x plus 4 to the x equals 5 to the x, you could use the exact same technique and then conclude that, okay, x equals 2 is going to work because this is the Pythagorean theorem. Some people say Pythagorean, but I think it's Pythagorean. Anyways, or an other example that is kind of more obvious is this one because 3 plus 4 is equal to 7. And in this case, x would be 1. And again, the solution would be unique because if you kind of go about writing it this way, and then you'll notice that, yes, that should be a single solution, right? But how do you find that solution, and how do you also prove that there are no other solutions without going into, I don't know, calculus maybe? Okay. So here's what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to notice that if x is equal to 1, we're going to get the following. 2 plus root 3 over 4 plus root minus 2 minus root 3 over 4 is actually equal to 1. Great. And we're kind of raising it to powers, right? To the x power. And then adding them and still getting 1. Well, that's kind of interesting, right? So when you raise these to powers, what's going to happen is that the values are going to change, Right? If you think about the uh, other examples, this will make more sense. Like, think about increasing the x. Something beyond 1 is not going to work. Here, here's what happens. If x is greater than 1, right, then 2 plus root 3 over 4 
to the power x is going to be greater than 2 plus root 3 over 4, right? Actually, that's not true. Uh, since this is less than 1, it's going to be the other way around. So this is going to be less than that. And when you do the same thing to the other base, same thing is going to happen. And when you add these two inequalities, you're going to get our expression is actually less than 1, which is impossible, right? Because when you add these, you get 1. Because we want that to equal 1. So if x is greater than 1, we have no solution. If x is less than 1, you get something similar, and our expression actually becomes this 1 becomes greater than 1. Okay? So it kind of means this. Like you said, three o you have 3 over 4. 3 over 5 and 4 over 5, let's say you square them, add them, and you get 1. But if you cube them, you're going to get 27 over 125 and 64 over 125, which is equal to 91 over 125. As you can see, this is going to be less than 1. And if you use a power that's less than 1, like 1 half, 1 third, then you're going to get something greater than 1. That means there are no solutions if x is greater than 1 or x is less than 1, which means x equals 1 is the only solution. But if you want to go with the easy route, of course, you could always conclude that, hey, I have a decreasing function and a horizontal line, so it kind of goes like this, and a horizontal line is going to intersect it at a single point. Of course, my, the way I graphed it, it kind of looks like increasing here, but you get the idea. This is probably going to be a better picture, something like this and then intersect with the horizontal line. Make sense? Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this problem from a more general perspective. So whenever we see problem like, problems like this, we could, you know, find the solution very easily, especially if this problem is on a time test, then you probably have a couple minutes to solve it. Okay, here's the idea. If you look at these expressions carefully, you add the basis, you get four. And of course, uh, when you divide by 4 and add them, you get 1. Same idea. But notice that their sum is 1. So you kind of get something like this. Call this A and call this B. So you kind of have like A to the X plus B to the X equals A plus B to the power X. And guess what? Of course, A and B are both positive, And this can only be satisfied if X is equal to 1. Now, how do you prove it? You could probably just use the binomial theorem, or you could factor the expression, and so on and so forth. But x equals 1, if a and b are both positive, are going to be, uh, x equals 1 is going to be the only solution. Notice that if a and b are both positive, a plus b is going to be greater than both a and b. Make sense? All right, great. So this brings us to the end of the video, but i got to show you the graph still. And here's the graph. And as you can see, our function, one of them is kind of like a parabola. It's not a parabola, but it's kind of like a curve that has a minimum. And uh, 4 to the x is just an exponential. So I can't safely say that this is not increasing or decreasing. It's actually increasing if x is positive, decreasing if x is negative. But we don't have a negative solution for obvious reasons. And as you can see, they'll intersect at a single point. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.